Storm, a few changes for them. Munster, of course, uh, held up at the judiciary. Uh, the, no comment, no comment. I played the fifth on that one. We aren't even going to touch it. I, if I, in the words of Jose Mourinho, if I speak, I'm in trouble. Um, Asa for Solomona right. comes. <laughs> Asa for Solomona is into the eight shirt. Christian Welsh held up after Origin uh, and the head knock that he copped, so he will be in the ten shirt. Uh, Eisenhoof is into the 12. There is no uh, no Bromwiches for the Storm this week. They will both miss out. As for the Tigers, uh, they welcome new signing Ken Mamalo, fresh off a hat-trick for the Warriors in his departing game. Um, but that is their only change, with the exception of Talau moving from wing, Dewey missing from the squad. Talau will drop into the centres. Roberts will move from the centre into the wing. Mamalo will be in the five. I think that the Tigers are really missing a trick not putting Talau and Mamalo on the same side. You, you understand how terrifying that would be? Yeah, that moment of realisation. That's the kind of thing where when you walk out to a game and you're looking at players and you're looking at how the numbers line up, if you're playing on the edge, that's the kind of thing that makes your ring piece pucker up and make the same noise as a helicopter blade going into overdrive. That's terrifying. Those two are huge. You pump the ball down that edge. I don't think that there's many edge players who are going to be physical enough to actually stop them without having to draft the second rower in just to lend a little bit of support. How, how have they missed that? I get that you want to distribute maybe a little bit of strength. Roberts and Norfolk are on the other side, pace on pace. Talau and Mamalo on the other side. Just huge. That's terrifying. I don't like that. That's a, That will keep my child up. I have a six-year-old. That will keep him awake at night just through sheer terror as to the kind of edge that you are dealing with there. Um, but I, I I don't get paid to pick teams. I I, I don't get paid to do anything really. Um, but the the t- <laughs> um, <laughs> but as as for the uh, the storm, it's, um, I'm feeling that this one's going to be a storm win. Um, I mean, how 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 can you back against a storm? Last week they were absolutely solid. Heinz is coming in just doing a lights out job at the back. Uh obviously he's he's got a contract now, he's earned his place, but he's not slowing off one bit. And Pappenhausen is potentially there's an argument that Pappenhausen's got a bit of a job to do to get back into the lineup because although he's an absolute gun fallback, oh, he's man. so difficult. He's he's difficult to keep out the squad, but to drop Nico Hines at this point, based on how he's been playing, would be an absolute injustice. You're not dropping Munster. You're not dropping Hughes. You can't really use Hines as a floating 13. Where the hell do you play Nico Hines? You, you can't drop him. It was, what's he done to constitute being dropped? Pappy Tell comes straight right. in. We both know Pappy comes straight in. Hines has not done a thing to deserve being dropped. They just This is a team that currently has Harry Grant, who is a origin and potential Australian number nine on the pine while Brandon Smith starts at hooker. Yes, I'm rocking on my chair because I don't know how to justify this. Um, the only thing, the only player, Unless they end up going Smith or Harry Grant, sorry, at nine, Smith onto the bench as a as that kind of 13 prop kind of player and they drop Chris Lewis and have Hines on the bench, the only other player that I could see them dropping, I don't think they will because he's a Decent defender is Justin Olam. But again, how do you justify dropping Olam? See, I thought you'd have gone on the other side and gone Remus Smith. Because you can't no, you can't have you, you you can't have you can't have Smith Hines. Yeah, you, you got too much of a size disparity there. Teams will teams will run that edge constantly. You need Jennings just to bulk out your your, your edge, basically. I agree. But you go the same thing. Adokar is the flying fox, but Olam's the 
it's weird because Adokar is no small man, but Olam is the defensive size on that side. But where do you play Hines? I think the more reasonable thing will be Harry Grant into nine. Smith comes to the bench. Chris Lewis dropped. Out of this week's list, knowing full well that there's no Bromwich and there's no... Oh, no, Welch is there, sorry. But knowing full well that there's no no Kenny, no Jesse, at least for this week, Lewis would be... But I don't know. Uh, in, ter- <laughs> in terms of this week, uh, Storm 13+. plus. Anytime try scorer... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 for the Storm. Take your pick. Um, Welcome you to Counting argue... with Luke. <laughs> you could Next week we're going to 18. <laughs> hey, maybe we could get the 20 if he comes up. Lero <laughs> is quite well in limited time this year. Um, realistically, you would say... Remus v. Roberts. Realistically, the way he's going, you go the cheese. You could also say Harry Grant. You could also say Nelson. You could also say Nico. You could very easily say the Fox for a double. You could say Hughes. I mean, let me swing it over. And find a little bit of value. I'll try and find a try scorer that's not under two dollars. Uh, who are you going with, Matthew? Uh, I'm going to go. It's a shame they don't offer second half markets for try scorers, but I'm I'm feeling Ooh, I'm feeling oh, Brandon Smith. Oh, there is. Okay, right. We're Ooh, going we're going Brandon it? Smith for a second half try. Um, I'm I'm feeling that when Grant comes on, they're probably going to bump Smith into the 13, give Fanukin a rest. I think that then once you've got Smith as that mobile 13, moving around, causing a little bit of havoc and just being that compact pain in the ass that he is every time you use him, I think that he gets over. So a Brandon Smith with a second half try, that's that's my value one there, I'm going to say. Um, I mean, in terms of an any time, Mamalo, maybe not a terrible shout considering last week, bag three against this <laughs> storm side. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not a terrible shout. Um but yeah, Storm 13 plus. Storm 13 plus Brandon Smith, second half try scorer. I of course I've said second half try scorer, and there's currently no market for it. I can tell you that to score a try in the first half, Brandon Smith is paying four dollars. I would assume. It'd be about that for the second half. Um, anytime try score up over two dollars for the storm. There are more than I thought. Hello there, Brandon Smith currently at two thirty seven. Jerome Hughes at two eighty. Nelson four thirty three. Could very easily burrow through the middle. Kenny Mamala at two fifty. Not bad if you're a t- if you want to throw some money on him. And even Nico Hines at a dollar ninety one. You're not, you know, you're not saying no to that. Adokar at 125 is no value, though. So if you want value, absolutely. The soft Solomona or uh, Mamalo. Realistically, any of, again, I said anyone over $2. Olin, Remus Smith, Brandon Smith, 2-2 two, two and 2 Jerome Hughes at 280, they're probably the four that I would throw in. But like I said, you could go 1 to 17 and then add 18, 19, 20 if you want. 